It's the Get Foxy Show. This time, our guest is R. Blank, the CEO of ShieldYourBody.com. R, thank you so much for taking the time today to be with us to talk about a really fascinating subject. Thank you so much, Terry. It's, it's, I really appreciate you, uh, you having me here. This is uh, going to be a really enjoyable discussion. Well, right off the bat, I don't know if many of my listeners are familiar with what EMF is. So let's, let's start there. What is, what is EMF and, and why is it a big deal? Sure. So I'll, it's a it's a complicated subject, and I'll try to I'll try to make it as accessible as possible. It is yeah, for my poor brain. <laughs> <laughs> so EMF stands for electromagnetic fields, and it's a form of energy. And there's a lot of different types of EMF. So one form of EMF that everyone's familiar with is sunlight. Sunlight is a type of EMF, all visible light. Now, if if EMF has more energy than sunlight then it's called ionizing. And that includes things like X-rays and gamma rays. And that stuff is really harmful, even in really small doses. That's why, you know, when you get your, your teeth X-rayed, you wear a lead jacket and the technician leaves the room. <laughs> That's how dangerous that stuff is. Now, there's types of EMF that have less energy than sunlight. And those are called non-ionizing. And we are exposed to non-ionizing EMF, which is mostly what people talk, are referring to when they talk about EMF, are these forms of non-ionizing EMF. And we are exposed to these uh, from a tremendous number of sources. So uh, power lines, anything that runs on power, like appliances, anything that communicates wirelessly. So uh, obviously that includes cell phone and Wi-Fi, but TV, radio, radar, all of these are forms of non-ionizing EMF. And that's what people are really talking about these days when they're talking about EMF. And historically, it was considered that these lower power, lower energy forms of EMF were, were benign. They didn't, they didn't hurt life or humans. But there's a, a, a really, really large and continually growing body of science now stretching back decades, uh, tens of thousands of studies that demonstrate uh, negative health effects, a wide variety of them, ranging from you know the less severe like sleep disruption and anxiety, all the way up to to more worrisome conditions like cancer and infertility, from exposure to these forces. We've got a lot. How, of how was that? <laughs> yeah, that's that's perfect. That that so clear. It just it it's a little okay. bit overwhelming in the fact that okay, we've got. All of these things, I mean, TV, radio, cell phones, appliances, our, our internet with our Wi-Fi, we're, we're being exposed to all of this. Yeah, and, yeah. It's and, actually- it, and it's growing every year because, you know, think about it 10 years ago, you know, the number of wireless devices in your life or the number of cell towers near you, you compare that to today and today you know, it's, it's not just all the Wi-Fi, it's, it's the smart fridge, the, the, the smart watches, the, the, uh, the wireless earbuds. So the exposures are continuing to grow and grow exponentially along with the growth and popularity of technology. What made you decide that this was something you were passionate about and started, started to learn about? Um, sure. Great question. So uh, my father, Dr. Martin Blank, was one he, uh, he passed away in, in, in 2018, but before that, in about 2012, he was working on a book to uh, communicate the science of EMF uh, health, uh, health effects to, to just regular people. He, you know, he was an academic um, and he spent most of his life publishing papers for other academics. This book was going to educate the public and uh, he was having uh, a, a he wanted, he wanted some assistance to try to make the book more accessible uh, to people to explain, because these, these can be complex issues. The science can be complex. It involves biology and, uh, and physics and electrical engineering and so forth. And at the time I had been teaching um, at the University of Southern California, and I offered to, to hop in and, and help him write the book. And in the course of writing that book, I mean, I. Obviously, he's my father. I grew up with him, so I, I always knew a little bit about what he had done. 
But in the course of writing that book, I really learned a tremendous amount about the, the state of the science, how compelling and convincing the science today is about the, the, the harm that this stuff causes. Um, but also because I, at the time, was a technologist and an entrepreneur, uh, and I have an MBA, so I always think in, of things in these, in these terms, I realized that, that the, the, the sources of these exposures, they are fundamental to modern society. So it's not like smoking, right? Where once we learn that smoking is really bad for you, we can combat it. We could even try to kill it off the planet. We could get rid of smoking. You'd have a few annoyed people for a little while, and that would be it. Uh, with EMF, we're talking, if we actually wanted to get rid of EMF, we're talking about going back to 1850 and before the light bulb. And that's just not viable. That's not what anyone wants. That's not what the economy can bear. It's not what society can bear. So the science behind this is, is very compelling that this stuff is harmful, but the sources of the exposures are fundamental to society. So I knew that there had to be a safer way for people to engage with the technology around them. And that's where the idea for SYB came from. And that's how I, I got started back in, in 2012. So how specifically does EMF affect the body? I mean, is, is it affecting us physically? Is it affecting us mentally? Does it affect our hormones or, or our immune systems? How does, how does that play out? Yeah, so that's a really good question. It really gets to the heart of how I view the significance of, of this risk. And that is that EMF essentially, what the science is showing us is that EMF essentially impacts every part of our body, every system in our body. And in part, that's because our bodies are electromagnetic beings. Oh, and we just lost our, <laughs> oh, we, ju we just lost you there. Sorry, for you. Our... <laughs> yes. I apologize. I don't know what happened. We just lost the room, but I'm back. No, no worries. Is, that's, that's, uh, that's an EMF for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the first time that's happened. So, um, okay. So I was saying uh, e what the science is showing us is that EMF impacts essentially every part of our body. And it shouldn't be surprising because our bodies are electromagnetic beings. And the way that our brain controls our body is through sending these electrical electromagnetic signals through our body, the way that we sense what's going on with our body. So every part of our body is tuned to very, very low doses, like extremely low doses of EMF. And they're getting bombarded by effectively massively power. Like the, the amount of power that your cell phone emits is so many orders of magnitude greater than what your brain uses to control your hand, for example. And so what we're seeing in the science is there's impacts to essentially every system that's measured. So that's why you can see things like sleep disruption and anxiety, uh, disruption of melatonin production, all the way up to like I say, tumor formation and infertility and basically everything in between. And everyone's affected differently because everyone's exposures are different uh, and everyone's physiologies are different. And so people, so some people, you know, they can get through life and, and not really be impacted at all. And other people can have debilitating illness and there's the whole spectrum in, in between. Uh, there are some folks out there, I think, who would say, why would you listen to this guy? Isn't, isn't this whole 5G EMF thing more of a, more of a conspiracy theory? I, I, to me, well, I there are conspiracy like... theories about five. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there are, there are definitely conspiracy theories out there about 5G and um, you know, I'm not, I'm not here <laughs> endorsing any of those. Why should you listen to me? You shouldn't listen to me. I am just communicating the science. And for anyone who takes the time to go look at the science, they'll see what I'm saying is correct. And they'll understand why the World Health Organization lists this, uh, this force as a, a class 2B carcinogen. 
the World Health Organization lists this as a carcinogen. A class 2B carcinogen, yes. Wow. Now, see, that's, that's not something that everybody knows. So this is important stuff that you're doing here. <laughs> Good grief. Yeah, I mean, and because it's, it's even more so, because there, I mean, you know, based off of the, the show that you, you, you run and host, there are a lot of different toxins in the world today. There are a lot, I mean, a lot. Um, and it's not that e I'm, I'm out here saying EMF is the only toxin in the world and that's what we need to deal with. But it's, it's a largely unappreciated fact that EMF is a toxin and people are surrounding themselves more and more and more with these uh, sources of, you know, we can say, for instance, you know, people know that lead is a toxin. And so they, they work hard to, to reduce it in their lives. They know that antibiotics in their food supply is a toxin and they work hard to eliminate that from their lives. They, they're aware of a lot of toxins and they take steps to, to reduce their exposure. And I'm saying EMF is one, definitely based on the science, one of these toxins that people need to be aware of and they need to take steps to remediate the, the, the quantity and extremity of, of, of uh, these exposures that they're subjecting themselves to. Now, this is interesting because, I mean, nowadays we've got these smartphones and people mm. are so attached to these smartphones. I mean, they're so well designed to make you really just keep it right, right near you. I mean, even, even sleep with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, if you read the manuals, they tell you not to carry them right on you. So for instance, if you read the iPhone manual, it tells you that the, 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 um, the radiation that they say it emits, right. It, it, it's under legal limits and the legal limits are, are not sufficient to protect us, but th they exist. There are these legal limits. And Apple says you have to keep the iPhone a certain distance away from your body in order to keep it under these legal limits. So whenever you see someone taking a phone out of their pocket or out of their breast pocket or women out of their bras, they are holding and maintaining their device at a closer to their body than the manufacturer themselves say is safe. So how do we go about reducing our exposure? So there's, I call them the two key rules of, of EMF protection. These actually came from my father. And they're, 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 they're fundamental and they're easy to use. So the first is to minimize your use of EMF emitting technology. And there's ways of doing that, uh, for instance, you know, I tell people, this is just an example. I tell people all the time to turn off their Wi-Fi at night. You know, there's, you could use ethernet and get rid of Wi-Fi entirely. A lot of people aren't willing to do that. But, you know, when you're asleep at night, you're not even using the Wi-Fi. So turn it off. And then you're, you're making a big difference in your exposure for like approximately eight hours. And it's a really important eight hours because it's when you're supposed to be recharging refreshing for the next day. And so minimizing your use of EMF technology. Another example of that, by the way, that I'm, I'm, I'm increasingly advising people is don't buy smart stuff you don't need. There is a, um, you know, a, a real push to get more and more smart technology into our homes, into our cars. And a lot of this stuff, you know, I used to be in the tech industry. I know that there's this kind of joy that comes, oh, look what nifty thing I got here. You know, don't just get something that a smart, tech, if you don't really need it, if it doesn't add real value to your life, don't get it. So those are examples of minimizing. The next is maximizing distance, right? So the first was minimizing use. The second key rule is maximizing distance. And this one's really important for people to understand because the power of EMF radiation diminishes exponentially with distance. So if you, for instance, if, you're, if this is you and this is your phone and they're about an inch apart, if you take that and make it two inches, the power, the, the power of your exposure has dropped 75% by doubling the distance. Mm -hmm. And so use it, when you use your tech, keep it as far away from you as is practical. So a, a good example of that is like I was just saying, don't carry your phone in your pocket. Don't use your laptop in your lap. 
um, keep these sources as far away from you as possible. And those, those are the two basic rules that everyone can start applying uh, in their lives and really make, because the, the goal isn't to eliminate your EMF exposure because that is in today's world, essentially impossible. So it's, you know, your, your goal isn't to eliminate it. Your goal is to reduce it as much as you can, with, you know, that you're comfortable with in your lifestyle. And those are the two ways of doing that. Then of course, beyond that, uh, my company uh, and companies like mine, we make EMF shielding products. So EMF shielding works uh, and this, this technology goes back about two centuries, ever since Michael Faraday invented his Faraday cage, um, where if you weave conductive metals in a certain uh, pattern, it can block and deflect EMF radiation in the other direction. And so, for instance, I have a foam pouch, which is a very popular product. I always tell people not to carry their phones in their pockets or bras, but some people still do because, honestly, you know, where else are you going to carry it? And so that's what the phone pouch exists for. You put the phone in the pouch and then you put the pouch on your belt or in your pocket and it deflects radiation in, in the other direction. Another is my laptop pad where I tell people all the time, don't use your laptop in your lap, but some people still want to. So put the laptop pad under your laptop and it protects your lap and reproductive organs. And so uh, that's where EMF protection products come into play. That's the type of product that my company makes and sells. But I always emphasize that's the second line of defense. The best EMF protection are the two key rules, which is minimizing use and maximizing distance. That is beautiful information. So listeners, there you go. You're going to want to do those two things to help minimize. And there again, you know, I mean, as a Chinese medicine practitioner, uh, we talk all about balance. And here again, I mean, it is, it is dang near impossible with the way that we work in our society to keep yourself from being exposed to EMF. So here we're trying to find the balance. And that is a beautiful thing, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I like the way that you framed that. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, this, is, uh, this is a little bit more off the, the subject, but I'm, I'm curious because you're an expert in this. Uh, I've been told that stones like tourmaline and shungite can be helpful for uh, limiting one's EMF exposure. What are your feelings on that? So there's a lot of, um, and I, I actually, I recently did a, a webinar on this subject because th there's a lot of um, uh, options out there pitching themselves as protection from, from, from EMF radiation. And a lot of it lacks real scientific backing. And uh, uh, stones like shungite and organite, and I believe hematite is considered by some to be protective. There's no real science that demonstrates that those are effective solutions. Um, that said, you know, I deal with, with thousands of customers on a regular basis, a lot of whom try a lot of different things. And some of them say that these solutions work for them. Others say they make no difference. And I, you know, so my approach is if, if, if it's working for you, certainly keep doing it. If someone you really trust is recommending that you try it, you know, go for it. But when I give advice to people uh, about which types of EMF protection to use, I really focus on, on the type that, that has measurable quantitative claims that's backed by science. So for example, with my products, they're shielding products. So you can actually measure, I mean, we do it in a lab, but then we also explain to customers how they can do it themselves with meters at home. And you can measure and see how much radiation is being shielded by using my products. So when it comes to EMF protection, you know, the ones that I focus on and advocate are the ones that have demonstrable claims that are backed by science. But I also recognize there are a lot of people out there who, who find relief and value in products that, that don't have demonstrable, uh, aren't, aren't, that don't have demonstrable measurements that aren't backed by established science. And I also want to be super clear, just because a product isn't, isn't backed by science does not mean the product doesn't work um, because science takes time. I mean, a hundred years ago, we didn't know what we know about EMF. 
uh, you know, science evolves over time. It, we learn new things. So just because a product isn't backed by science doesn't mean I'm saying it doesn't work. It's just that when I give people advice about how to approach remediating EMF in their lives, I really do focus on the stuff where it's quantifiable, it's measurable, and it's supported by science. Brilliant. How can people more, find out more about your products and your book? Or, or if they want to learn more about you, where can they go? Sure. So uh, if you go to shieldyourbody.com slash get foxy, so that's shieldyourbody, all one word, dot com slash get foxy. You can learn about my products. You can download my uh, guide uh, with the five top ways that you can slash your personal EMF exposure. And, um, and of course, you can reach out and contact me through, through there as well. Excellent. Excellent. So you offer folks a free guide. And what is in that free guide? So that is the, the, the five top ways that you can make a big difference in your own personal EMF exposure. Uh, so it's specific tips, but then it also explains uh, why those, those tactics are so significant. And, you know, I'll, you know, the one, I'll, I'll just say, I've already said it here, is not to carry your phone in your pocket. And what people need to realize is, you know, because as you've, you've said, I've said, but both of us have said in this interview, the number of sources of EMF in our environment are continuing to grow. And as you become aware of EMF as a health risk, it can feel a little overwhelming. You can feel a little helpless. Like, what am I going to do? How can I protect against all this? And so I really want to emphasize to people that, it is what you do with the technology that is closest to you that can make the biggest impact on your personal health. And it goes back to what I was saying about distance. So if you carry your phone in your pocket and you do it you know, for a few hours a day, that is quite possibly your single biggest exposure to EMF and you're doing it every single day. So making a change like that, even even given all the cell towers and Wi-Fi networks and everything around you, making a change like that is super important. And so my book goes in, 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 into those details and also explains a bit about my products and how I got into this. And it, it is really great. People really like, it's not just a, a five page infographic. It's, it's a real ebook. And <laughs> your website again was shieldyourbody.com, correct? Yes. Yes. So shieldyourbody.com shieldyourbody.com and slash get foxy yes okay so there you go <laughs> listeners shieldyourbody.com slash get foxy and you will find products a free guide and some really good information on taking care of yourself and your family i'm going to switch it up a little bit here r and I want to know what your definition of foxy is. What does foxy and being foxy mean to our blank? <laughs> so for some reason, I feel like this is a loaded question, uh, but I did think about it. And um, I don't know, to me, I mean, foxy has a lot of different meanings. Um, but to me, foxy is a, it's a, it's a really sneaky form of intelligence. And you know, who, it's, sly, it's like sly, like a Fox, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of, yeah. Who would, who would you consider to be Foxy? You well, I, definition. I don't know what, yeah. I don't, I don't know why you'd expect me to say anything other than uh, you, Terry, you, you, <laughs> you are, are the foxiest person I know. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I definitely Yes, I, I agree. I, I am Foxy. And I will say that uh, I don't bring anybody on this show that isn't Foxy themselves. So that that also applies to you, sir. <laughs> oh, shucks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should be asking you. I feel like we've covered so much in, in a short amount of time. Other than keeping your cell phone out of your pocket, is there anything else that a person should do in order to either, either learn more or, or protect themselves in, in a way that reduces that EMF exposure? 
Sure. So there are a lot of things that people could do. Another example is not sleeping with your phone uh, for sim- very similar reasons to you know turning off your Wi-Fi at night. You're not getting any benefit out of ha- having it. And it's right there next to your body. And that is increasing your health risk by increasing your exposure. It's also disrupting your sleep, both because of the EMF and because of the psychological uh, impact of having a, you know, this notification machine right next to you. Um, and there, there are multiple ways like that, that, that people can, can, can really start to live safer. And that's why I, I strongly encourage people to download my guide at shieldyourbody.com slash get foxy. And we also have a ton of other information on the website. We have a library of educational videos. We have uh, webinar archives. We have a blog with tons of articles. We have other eBooks on very important subjects like EMF testing on 5G and so forth. So shieldyourbody.com slash get foxy is, is really where I, I encourage everyone to, you know, for their next step, that's what, that's what they should take. That's excellent. Well, our, our time is up, but I want to say thank you so much for really your, your service to your humanity here. I mean, this is, this is definitely something that folks aren't paying enough attention to. So thank you for being that beacon out in the darkness, bringing people awareness about this subject. And thank you so much for having me here today for this discussion. I, this was great. I, I really loved the flow.